Banning Clutch Munitions, Government Policy and Practice is a new 288-page report that was researched and written by two non-governmental organizations, Human Rights Watch and Landmine Action. These two organizations were among the founders of the Cluster Munition Coalition, the international NGO coalition that was largely responsible for bringing about the new treaty banning these weapons. The report was produced by the Landmine Monitor Initiative of the International Campaign to Ban Landmines. Banning cluster munitions is the first comprehensive look at global policy and practice on cluster munitions. It looks at what 150 different countries have done with respect to the global effort to ban this weapon. It also looks at the situation with respect to production, stockpiling, trade, and use of the weapon. It's the first report really to pull all of this together into one spot and will serve as um, a very useful tool for seeing how governments do at implementing this new ban that has uh, been brought about by the Convention on Cluster Munitions signed in December of 2008. There has been a, a true sea change in global attitudes toward cluster munitions. They have gone from being called a wonder weapon that uh, was vital to the national defense of dozens and dozens of countries to being called an indiscriminate weapon that should never be used again. Four years ago, you would have been hard-pressed to find a single country anywhere in the world who would have been advocating for a total ban on cluster munitions. You certainly wouldn't have found a single country that actually possessed the weapon who would be talking about a ban. Most of the countries of the world have now embraced the notion of a comprehensive ban on the weapon, including most of those who in the past used it or stockpiled it or traded in it or produced it. This report also presents global facts about production, trade, stockpiling, and use of cluster munitions. Pulls it together in a way that we have not seen before. Has the most up-to-date and comprehensive information on these aspects of cluster munitions. It identifies 14 governments that have used cluster munitions in the past in 33 different countries or disputed areas and gives details on these, not just the well-known ones like Lebanon or Iraq or Laos, but the ones that no one has really heard of before, like Grenada or Sierra Leone. It also gives details on the 34 countries that have produced the weapon in the past. Just about half of those producers signed the Convention on Cluster Munitions and will never use the weapon again. It gives details on the 85 countries that have stockpiled this weapon at some point in time. Again, about half of those stockpilers have signed the Convention on Cluster Munitions and taken on an obligation to destroy them within eight years. It has as much detail that's publicly available on the trade in the weapon, identifies 15 different countries that have exported the weapon to other states and in some cases to rebel groups. One of the most encouraging things that we've seen is that the countries who signed have already started to destroy the weapon, taking on their, their obligations uh, even before the treaty legally enters into force. We've seen Spain, for example, already destroy its entire stockpile, a wonderful example for uh, the rest of the world. Colombia, just last month, destroyed almost all of its stockpile. This was a country that wasn't even sure it was going to sign the convention a year ago. Norway and Canada and Belgium and Austria and about a dozen other countries have already started destroying their stocks and plan to complete their destruction long before the eight-year deadline in the convention. These are cluster munitions that will never be used and will never take a civilian casualty. The report banning cluster munitions provides a benchmark of international attitudes towards these weapons before the Convention on Cluster Munitions has actually come into force. In the years ahead, we expect to see more states giving up these weapons and joining the Convention, as the standards of this treaty become very much the international norm. The bold and dynamic way in which the Convention on Cluster Munitions was created provides a very encouraging example of how multilateral diplomacy can very swiftly achieve life-saving humanitarian results. Civil society groups uh, in the Cluster Munition Coalition, UN agencies, the International Committee of the Red Cross, and a large number of committed states work together to redefine what is acceptable in armed conflict. The exemplary partnership between governments and civil society was a hallmark of this process.